Hey, everybody. Welcome back to Keeping the Faith with Kim. And I am so excited to have another amazing guest for you today. Before I introduce her, I got to tell you a little story. I was thinking last night, like, okay, what am I going to name this podcast? Because when we talked on the phone just to chat about this podcast, we chatted for about an hour and a half. There were so many God moments in her story. And so I kept thinking, like, maybe we'll call it God can. But I just kept feeling like, ah, oh, no, it's more than that. And so this morning, it, it's just so crazy how God's timing is so perfect. This morning I was reading from 2 Corinthians 12, verses 9 and 10, when it says, but he said to me, my grace is sufficient for you, for my power is made perfect in weakness. Therefore, I will boast all the more gladly about my weaknesses so that Christ's power may rest on me. This is why for Christ's sake, I delight in weaknesses, in insults, in hardships, in persecutions and difficulties. For when I am weak, then I am strong. <laughs> and in that moment, it was like God was saying, that's it. That's her story. So Claren, I am so honored to have you with us today. You're a mama of four boys, which clearly his grace has to be sufficient <laughs> for you. You're a full-time financial advisor. And honestly, you have a story of God's love, of God's guidance, of God's support, a story yeah. of hardships, a story of insults and, and persecutions, and, and a story of when you were weak, you were strong because his grace was sufficient. And I'm so grateful that you're here to share that with us today. I'm great. How I'm great. You? I'm so excited to be here, Kim. I'm so glad that we were connected and that I have the opportunity to share and hopefully help and inspire someone who is feeling all those ways that they're and can know that their grace is sufficient. Um, you were saying earlier, I'd asked you, I said, okay, so when I'm introducing you, have you, are, are you out there speaking? And you shared a little bit. It was like, no, I've been on a few podcasts, but really speaking isn't something that I do. But now this story, you know, is one that needs to be shared. And you said something a little bit ago when we were chatting that I was like, you have to share that about why people need to hear this story, why you're sharing more right. now than ever. So I think that when you have these things happen to you, right? I grew up going to church on every Sunday, doing all the right things, was going to live this perfectly mapped out life. And until it wasn't this perfectly mapped out life, I had to give up my plan to be able to live God's plan. And part of that we were just talking about was, you know, all these things have happened, not to me, but for me. So and I cannot, ooh, I cannot keep those to myself, right? Because someone else needs, may need encouragement, may need hope, may need to know that the hard things bring really great things, you know, letting go and giving it to God brings us beauty. But not only that, but being able to be the person that has come out of the fire and be the person to grab the bales of water and go to the people that are still on fire um, just to be able to give back what's been given to me. And, you know, when you get to the other side, you know, sometimes when you're in the fire, you're unsure and you're uncertain right. of the outcome. But you know, you know what, Lord, I don't, I don't expect you, it'd be great if you took this fire away. I don't expect you to, but I know you're going to walk yeah. with me through it. And now for people to hear you on the other side that are in that fire, like you said, to give them a hope, don't turn from him, turn to him. And like you said, this isn't happening to you. This is happening right. for you. <laughs> and so... You know, just share a little bit about some of the things that that right. have been your fire. Well, and the good thing is, 
if everybody is willing to see it and be open to it, it's happening for everyone. It's not just for you or for me or for certain people, right? It's there for everyone. Um, so a little bit of my story, I was, um, I wanted to be president of the bank and I was going to be super successful and do it all on my own and get married and have the right number of kids at the right time. And, um, just to, I was going to get all the things right. And that was going to make me get what, what I wanted out of this world as a young adult and ended up marrying, mm -hmm. um, the wrong person. And it was really hard and didn't realize it wasn't for me until after we were married. And for a long time, I thought, oh, this is God's plan for me is to be in this place until I had someone help me to see that God loved me enough to, that he wouldn't want me in this place. Um, so that was really hard. Mm -hmm. And then there was a lot of challenges because we had two children in that marriage and that led to some custody trials and maybe some, oh, I can tell you back in those days, it was sometimes like I'd wake up and I'd be okay. And then there was a frying pan that would knock me down and I'd have to get back up or there wasn't enough money or there, um, I was afraid I was going to lose my children for good and wouldn't see them again. And then seeing them having to do terrible things that you wouldn't, your number one job as a parent is to protect your kids, right? And so I felt like that was when I really gave it to God. And I said, I cannot, I cannot carry this. And I had to say that mm. these are your children. They're not mine. And I had to give them to God and entrust them to him completely that he was going to take care of them that they were going to be okay and that he would protect them when i couldn't and that was probably wow. the start of my real relationship with god and giving it to him and knowing that i had messed up but he was going to get it he was going to help me and um it got to be, there were so many frying pans day after day that I'll never forget. I got to the point where I said, man, this is tough, God. I cannot wait to see what's on the other side of this. This is so hard. It's got to be so beautiful on the other side. Um, and so that was the first that was when I think back of how my relationship with God changed and how I had to really give up all the things I wanted. It was giving up my children and knowing that I was their God, but they were his. I think one of the things as you were telling that story that I heard was in the beginning, it was like, this is what I want. This is what I want. I want this many kids. I want this type of life. And then when it came to you, you're thinking, okay, like you said, this must be God's will. Look at this. I, I did it right. And then you would start to realize I did it my way. And his way is different. And one of the beautiful <laughs> things about God is, you know, he's going after that, that lost sheep. And at that moment, you were a lost sheep. And he will use... He doesn't just let you be lost. Like you said, it took a friend to speak his words of truth. He will use whatever he can. He doesn't give up on you. And then for you to be still in the fire, but at a different place with him, a place of surrender, to be able to say, dang, Lord, this is not fun. This is hard. I can't wait, like you said, to see what is on the other side. It must be glorious. It must be beautiful. What a hope to give to people to, if you don't have that relationship with him yet, seek it out, find it. Because none of us are going to be without trials, without hardships, without persecution. It's, it's life and they'll come, but they're hard right. no matter what. But with him, there's hard, but there's still hope. And that's what you just radiate. 
<laughs> and and I love that. Thank you for sharing that with us because I know there was someone out there right now saying, "Oh my right. goodness, I needed to hear that." Well, and and the, and the wild thing is, as soon as you surrender your plan and say, "I'm going with yours," you start to see God everywhere. <laughs> And yeah. you start to see the signs that were there before, but your eyes were open to those, right? Um, yeah. You're you're feeling down. You're feeling like a failure. Um, divorce, I like to say, is not like uh, cancer, right? <laughs> cancer is we want to bring you a casserole. We want to be here for you. Everybody surrounds you. Divorce, it can be a little lonely. It's almost like, well, that might have been self-inflicted and I don't want to catch that. I will say that the I learned so much and grew so much through my divorce and my parenting and my way of living and my way of loving and sharing. Um, but I will tell you the other side was more beautiful than I ever could have imagined. You would have to do something. Yep. That's how he works. It's incredible. And I do believe, you know, I haven't experienced divorce. I've married somebody who was, um, and it is, it can be a lonely place. And, you know, when you describe, I don't know if I've ever thought of that. Yeah. When you, when you have the illness, the sickness, such as cancer or whatever it is, the <laughs> casseroles come in, the love, the support, but when you're going through a divorce, such a hard, hard time. It's, it's a lonely place to be. And so how wonderful, I mean, I guess that's that his grace yeah. was sufficient, you know, he was there in that time to, you know, and, and, and yeah. that's what you needed. You needed right. him more yes. than the casserole, you right? Yes. I needed him to, I mean, I really felt like I oh. laid down and he picked me up and he carried me, um, he carried me so many days. He carried me in the people I saw, the prayers I received, the, I mean, dropped down my next husband right in front of me when I'd been screaming, I'm never doing that again. Um, and in so many ways, he showed up in so many ways for me and um, my family and my children, especially. He's every, he is everywhere if you're willing to look. And waiting for you. I love that. Yeah, I like when you said, you know, when you finally opened right. your eyes, he was there. So you said about the story of he dropped your husband. <laughs> when you told me that story, I just was like, that is incredible. Because, you know, sometimes I go through, something happens during my day and I just look up and I go, darn God, you are so good. Wow. And, I, and my heart aches sometimes for people that right. can't see him working. It's just, you know, and then you do, you look back on your life and you're like, oh my gosh, he was there. I was just, I, I was blind. I couldn't see him, you know? So tell us a little bit about, you know, him dropping your husband right there in a time of brokenness, a time of loneliness, a time of not feeling worthy, feeling like a failure. And boom, God said, right? watch this, Claren. <laughs> well, I had, I had promised myself I'd never have that kind of pain again. And you know, went out with some friends on my birthday and don't you know, he dropped this wonderful man right in front of me and we met and had a conversation and that Sunday I was at a, an Episcopal church for the first time in my life, pretty much, um, sitting on the front row with a three-year-old and five-year-old sleeping and saw the guy that I had met Friday night that wanted my number going up to take communion and I thought it oh does. my goodness I didn't give him my number and I definitely didn't tell him I had two children um because at that time I felt like I was broken right it wasn't in my plan to be divorced and have children and get find find love again so um yeah we ended up ha having so many connections we should have met maybe 15 times before and just hadn't and we got married and were blessed with two more beautiful children and two more boys. So it's, it's fantastic to have the older boys and the younger boys and see all that God has given me through this wonderful new marriage and a new beginning and um, how he's blessed 
all of us in so many ways, and especially with two more children. And when you are in the thick of the fire, it is, it's so hard to believe what's possible. What, you know, how could, you know, how could something good come from such hurt, such pain? And, and yet when you hold on to that hope, when you, you know, there's such a difference between knowing about right. God and knowing God. <laughs> right, right. We know yeah. about him. That you're not thinking like, about the other side. You're just like, God, this is horrible. I don't like you. I don't deserve this. Right. Bye, Felicia. I mean, pretty much. But when you know him, you're able to say like you did, I can't wait for the other side. I'm going to, I'm going to surrender this to you. I'm going to let you hold my hand because it's going to get ugly, Lord. I can tell. And, and it did get ugly, but how beautiful right. it is on the other side. And I think sometimes what, when people want to know is, okay, I get that, but how do you right. get there? How, what, what led you, how did you get to a place to be able to say, I know what's on the other side of this is beautiful, Lord, and I'm going to trust you. How do you, how wow. did you well, get there? You, I, you know, it's funny. When I do talk sometimes or write devotions and things like that, I always say that it's I don't want people to suffer, but I had to. I had to absolutely hit rock bottom and know that there was no way getting out of any of this alone, Right. So part of it was, you know, my determination that God gave me, um, but it was such a deep conviction that I could not save myself in this situation. Someone else was going to have to do it for me. I, it was too much, and I was too tired, and I was too broken to do it. If it were me... I would have laid in the bed and never gotten up. Hmm. And when yeah. I look back, I think he gave me those two boys, so I would have to get up. Oh, wow. Um, mm -hmm. He gave me my parents so I could Beautiful. be supported. He gave me a big family that loved me and would, took care of us. Um, and sometimes we still felt really lonely. But um, yeah, not not until I was completely broken at rock bottom did I really surrender and not just know about God, but know God. Yeah. And not this God that has an expectation of me, but God that has grace. And he knows all the sins and all the mistakes and all the things I, I wasn't turning towards him. And he wants to pick me up and carry me anyway. So, so beautiful. And, you know, when you said earlier about, you know, we don't want anyone to suffer, but the way in which, you know, it, it's easy to not need God when things are going great. You know, you're just like, you're happy, life is grand and, you know, oh, so what if I miss church this weekend? Or so what if I'm not in his word? Look how great life is. And then it is in those broken moments when you realize Netflix right. isn't helping me. <laughs> <laughs> you know, these things that we turn to, these worldly things that we turn to when we, in, when we are in our deepest and darkest struggles, they're not the strength right. that we need and he is he just is and and i don't know if i want to say unfortunately or fortunately i don't know it takes those broken moments to i think for some people to move from the knowing about him to the knowing him it's in that suffering and i think that's why you know paul says you know he 
he had a thorn in his side and he begged God, take this from me. And we don't really know what the thorn was. It could have been a physical ailment. It could have been a sickness. We, we don't really know, but God, he begged God, take it from me. And God said, no, because when you are weak, you can be strong because of my grace. And I think for me, you know, I right. live every day with a brain tumor. And would I love it not to be here? Yes. But every day it reminds me that he is my strength. And, you know, could he could he take it from me? Could he just and take it out? Yes. But every day it's a constant reminder that right. I need him. That I surrender to him. I'm relying on him no matter what tomorrow brings. I still say sometimes, you know, God, if you want to get rid of that, feel free. You don't have, I don't have an expectation, but feel free. That'd be great. But I, then I go, but your will be done. You well, and the, and the thing, the <laughs> thing that's so wonderful too, right? When you have those hard things and you give it to God, his plan actually is way better and way more beautiful. And there's so much more abundance. And I don't mean things, but there's so much beauty in the world that he created that I was missing before, right? Mm -hmm. And you, yeah. with what you've been through and what I went through subsequently after my divorce, right? It's It gives you such a perspective when you have to face your mortality, right? And it enables you that for some reason, that's how you know it's real, right? You want more of that beauty than you do of the mm -hmm. beauty of of the world that is not built in hope and faith and just the simplicity of God's love. Well, and you kind of alluded to this, and I, I want us to, to go there next. You know, he sends you this amazing man. You have these two children and you start to see the glorious side of it. Now, you were still going through some hardships and some struggles um, yeah. because that's, like I said, that's life. But you were on that other side and, and that was a better side to be on. And then. So I, yeah, I was hard, about 34 yeah. weeks pregnant with our youngest, Sam, who will be six tomorrow, which is such a joy. And a friend of a friend was diagnosed with breast cancer. And I happened to be going in the next day for my regular two-week checkup because I'm now almost 34 weeks and said, hey, a friend of a friend was just diagnosed with breast cancer. Will you just make sure everything's okay with me? And as it turns out, that crazy one-time phone call from a friend of a friend led me to being diagnosed about two days later with an aggressive breast cancer while I was pregnant with our fourth child. That wasn't the only unplanned pregnancy I've had. And had I not been at the doctor I, and been pregnant, you know, I would not be talking to you today. Wow. Unbelievable. Mm -hmm. And so at that moment, you know, when, when I went through you know, past two surgeries, radiation and all that. And then I started to have some complications and biopsies checking for breast cancer too. You know, people would always say to me, were you like, dude, God, what are you doing? Come on. You know, or were you like, it's okay. I've got done, you know? And I always say, I don't, I don't know if it's as black and white as that. I think that was a little bit of both. Like, what's up? I know you got me, but come on, you know? Um, where were you at that moment? I can't imagine, yeah. you know, you feel like you're finally climbing out of that, yeah. that yeah. dark valley. And then, then well, you hear this. I kind of said to myself and to God, well, we were in a really great rhythm here. I was leaning on you. You gave me my hard card. I passed my test. Isn't there just one? That was really what I thought. Like, right. wow, exactly. the, that one wasn't doozy and I thought that we I thought we were I thought we were in sync here and so I did think that and then I thought this is not funny God that's this is the one thing that I've been praying for since I 
left my previous husband was to never get cancer and make it until the boys were at least 18. And I was saying to him, they're 10 and 12. They're not 18. Why me? Why me? And then I, then I, I changed my tune so quickly because immediately when I questioned myself, God showed up everywhere. And all the little miracles, looking back on that, he lined everything up so perfectly. And I even saw it at the time we were moving into a new house. If we hadn't moved, there wouldn't have been room for my parents to live with us. If we weren't, if we weren't planning this vacation, I wouldn't have had a week to relax and enjoy my entire extended family before I gave birth the next day and started chemo two days later. Um, and I remember that process was so different, as I explained earlier, because so many people, the amount of people that came, it was overwhelming how many people wanted to show up and support and be a part of this healing process. And um, then there was this new baby, this new life that was so awesome. And if I, if you could meet Sam, if he were on here today, you would know all children are a gift from God, but he was sent directly by God to save me. And he reminds me, yeah. God reminds me of that every day through Sam and his words and all the things that he does. I think it is, you know, just so beautiful to hear you tell your story and the way in which you have such a deep trust in him. <laughs> And, you know, I, I would say you kind of have every reason not to, right? Like, it was like, he just kept throwing things and, you know, we didn't go into the detail of so many of the different things right. that were thrown your way. Right. We hit the big one. You, you really have, you know, when, when some of us are going through things in life, and we, we start to lose hope. We start to think, gosh, there just can't be a way out of this. I hope and pray that, that this episode lands in their lap because then they can hear there is a way out and it is him and him alone. And he provides and he protects and he guides and he leads and he, he, he does the unthinkable yeah. and all he expects from us is just to trust and you are the epitome of that trust and it, it's just you know i didn't know <laughs> you prior to this and Gerald, who i had him on a few weeks ago uh, said to me you have to interview her and i feel like i didn't just find somebody to be on my podcast. I found somebody who is an inspiration to me in my faith, who is, is a person who I want to walk alongside life with from <laughs> now until you know, and high five in yes. heaven say when hopefully we get three five women and he says, well done, good and faithful servants. I watched that episode, <laughs> that podcast episode. It was great. <laughs> But yeah, the work in him is just a beautiful thing. And I just thank you for sharing that with all of well, us and today. One thing, one thing that it I really want even... people to know is, you know, you have a background and we're a teacher and all of these things. And here I am. I like to say my faith is just on the job training. <laughs> just a regular, yep. everyday human who came upon a, a chance a, a point in time and made a decision to do things a little bit differently than than I had before right it there was no bible reading that changed my mind there was no 
it was just real life experience that gave me that deep faith and that belief and that knowing that to trust. That's yeah, that's just beautiful. And I say in the beginning of all my podcasts that this, this is, this is for the everyday Christian, just trying to live like Christ, just trying to figure it out. And you are the example of figuring it out as it came via trust, via knowing him, not just knowing about him. And I just, I'm, I'm honestly grateful Mm -hmm. that you shared this with us because I just know there's somebody out there that is going to listen to this and, and going to need to hear exactly what you said. So as we close up, are there any final thoughts that you want to kind of share with us that sum up the story, sum up the trust, sum up all of the ways in which God well, has been working so in your life. One thing that I love to, to tell people and that I've used in some of my talks before is I once read a meme that said being a grown up, and you could say being a human, is like looking both ways before you cross the street and then you get hit by an airplane, right? So, so what are you going to so do true. with the airplane? right? Are you going to let it knock you down? Are you going to get back up? Um, and so there, there will always be more hard things. And I think being open is one of the most healing things I've done. So if you are having feelings and you feel alone, I always say to anybody I chat with, don't sit alone. There is someone going through the same thing, but being open and being vulnerable and um not feeling shame right for the things that have happened but knowing that even when you feel shame to let go of that shame and give it to god that is where love is that is where hope is and that will help you to see god everywhere it's there for everyone it's like i said in the beginning it's not just for you or me it's there for everybody to have Well, I can't think of a better way to end this episode than than right there. It is, he is there for all of us. And what, what he can do with you, for you, to you, um, through that fire is just, like you said earlier, more than you could ever imagine. His ways are such, so much greater than we can ever imagine ever ever know and he just wants us to trust that so thank you so much for sitting with me today being open being vulnerable letting us see you know hope just radiates Uh from you and and it is a beautiful thing to see and and i feel so grateful that you shared that with me and that you shared that well thank you so much for having me it's been so much fun to be here today and um Look forward to what the future holds for your podcast. So exciting. Thank you for doing this. This is great. Well, thank you. And listeners, I hope you enjoyed this episode as much as I did. (laughs) I can't wait to go back and listen to it because I feel like I'm going to learn so much. So until next time, my friends, love them like Jesus. Thank you.